Hello everyone, welcome in. Welcome to this uh, development project that I'm gonna work on for Power BI Challenge 4. So just like I've done with previous challenges, I thought, hey, I'm gonna participate in the challenge, so why don't I record myself doing it? And you can see how I basically work through from start to finish my own development. So you're gonna see how I think about the challenge, how I then approach my work within the challenge, um, you know, how I have a look, you know, how I try and plan out my data model based on what the data looks like. So I'll talk through some ideas around that. Uh, and also, uh, also how I go about my, you know, DAX calculations, how I, how I extract the insight that I want, uh, and then also, uh, how I create my visualizations. And so I'm going to showcase that methodology, that thought process, but also, uh, all of the tools that you can use uh, within the enterprise DNA ecosystem on our education platform to to actually uh, develop your own models um, and and do it really really effectively develop really high quality work, okay? And so uh, I'm going to do a bit different um, this time around as well, where I'm actually going to um, have the screen on me too, so we can um, yeah I guess so you can sort of see how I how I work through things. We'll just see how we go. Like I remember uh, last last time this took over an hour and a half for me to actually go through something uh, and get to a point which was um, you know you could see where I was going with it. We didn't we I didn't totally complete my my report. I think my for challenge three my report development took maybe. In total, maybe three hours, I think, because I got sort of stuck in one little area and I, around the visualization or like how to visualize an, an insight. Um, so we'll just see how we're going uh, with this with this particular one. Um, it might go for longer, it might go for shorter. I'm I'm just not sure. I'll just get you to a point where you can at least see how how I do things and and leverage off how I do things and and how you can do it too. Okay, and that's what I want and try and inspire you to do is you know anyone who you know, users Excel can utilize Power BI in a really effective way, right? It just it just takes um, understanding some of these best practices or at least embedding some of these sort of best practice ideas that I have into your work uh, and then you can replicate them in, in whatever scenario um, you're, you, you might be dealing with. Okay, now let's have a look at the challenge first. Okay, so we'll dive into the challenge here. So you can actually access it a few ways. Um, I'll just make sure my, my Zoom's actually working here. Just give me a second, because I want to be able to zoom into various different things. Okay, cool. So, because the challenge is so active, it always appears at the top of our forum, so you can actually access it, um, probably if you, if you depending on when, you, when you're listening to this, uh, you can access it there. Uh, but also we have a, a category for um, ch challenges in this in this part of the forum. So all you got to do is click on that, and then you'll see uh, our group, uh, well, all all of our submissions and and activity and engagement on each different challenge here. So what we're doing here is we're going into the Power BI Challenge Four. So I'm just going to jump in here. And we're going to walk talk through the challenge and, and talk through what um, you know, when I'm when I'm recording this. Actually, some have already actually uh, have submitted have submitted their own um, reports, but I'm just getting started now. Okay, so the brief. Let's have a look here. You are working at a consultancy that implemented an app for a client to help improve their delivery process and fulfillment from warehouses to store. The app was created so that drivers can scan the label as opposed to entering it manually while also recording the time of arrival, the time left, and the time left of the store. So we're, 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 we're focusing on sort of the logistical optimization here. The management is now looking to evaluate how the business has reacted to the app. A senior consultant has extracted all the data from the app and pasted it into the file below. Now want to use this data to create a report or dashboard to help management visualize what has been happening so that they can decide what the next stage of the transformation is. The management are particularly interested in the warehouse store combination that is not working well for. Okay, so we need to try and... I, so obviously there's going to be some data on warehousing and stores, right? And we need to see if, if, if the, the, the metrics within the app are performing well or are optimized. So we've got the time being spent at store, the number of times manual entry was used, the number of damaged labels, if returns are being collected. Okay, so, we, so it looks like we've got four different things that we can work with here, which is pretty good. The ballers are now in your court, um, so on and so forth. Okay, cool. So... Anyone can actually 
um, participate in this challenge, right? So uh, even if you aren't a member, you can still download it and participate. You just can't obviously participate in, in the actual challenge within our form. What we have done for this particular one as well, I'll just mention this, we've opened it up on the Power BI forum. So you can actually participate there and we're sort of running dual competitions on exactly the same scenario. Okay, so I've already opened, uh, I've already opened the data. Um, just give me a second. I've already opened the data, so let's have a let's have a look through it. Okay, so let's have a look at this one first because I think this is sort of the main one. So what we've got here is this is the data out of the app, right? We've got some information on warehouse and our store invoice number, and this is where all of the um, information for those those key internal metrics, right? Match method. It looks like we've got some manual, some scanned, label damage. Um, general damage, returns collected, uh, and then we've got, this is interesting, this is really interesting. We are dealing with time here, which is is actually very unique in Power BI. Like it's, it's, it can be actually quite confusing how to deal with this in Power BI, so it's gonna be a really good ch challenge for us to actually manage this uh, date and time data, okay? So to me, nothing too challenging here, which is good. Um, you know, there's, uh, it's, it says in the uh, particular challenge itself, that one is represents when it's true and zero represents when it's false okay so you know this is this is not like from a technical perspective that difficult but we can get creative within within power bi as well so uh, i wouldn't you know i wouldn't i wouldn't say this is we could we can we could keep this simple if we wanted to but you know the the idea behind these challenges is we really want to see some out out of the box thinking right uh, outside outside the norm thinking around what you can do so we'll, we'll try and come up with something um during you know while, while i record this i mean uh, i have to say i mean i've i have only just looked at this data i've i've i haven't actually thought of what we're going to do i'm just sort of making it up as we go so um you know just so you can see how how i how i think of things on this on the spot whether i come up with an amazing solution um you know uh it sort of depends maybe maybe um maybe i'll need to go get a coffee to make sure it might get my get my brain humming a little bit better but we'll, we'll we'll see how we go okay so look it doesn't look too hard to me i mean we've got so we've got a warehouse we've got our warehouse um uh, codes here so so the, so i know i know this is going to be a lookup table right because this this is obviously going to be our fact table it's got all of our key information here i've got a lookup table and it looks like i've got another lookup table here um it looks like this is a bit but messed up the title so i'll just actually delete that and so these are all our stores and these are our warehouses so i mean a, a, a map visualization would be would be quite good here right but it doesn't seem like we we have exact coordinates on, on on our these particular locations so it would be hard to run sort of you know if we had like specific longitude and latitude data where this warehouse was actually located that would be quite interesting um and also our stores but we don't have that sort of granular information so we can only work with what we've sort of got uh so we'll just see we'll see i, I don't know if a map is really going to work even though a map would would uh, would make sense here okay so i mean let's get started i mean doesn't the, the great thing here doesn't actually look like there's too much we need to do which is from a cleanup perspective there's there are probably some things that we'll we'll, we'll we'll get to but i think that we can really just bring this data in and, and and just make some minor tweaks to it one of the one of the interesting things is this we're going to have to break out the time and the dates okay because in power bi these these particular columns do not work very well okay and so we need to um, we need to be able to manage that. And you can do that quite simply. And I think this is a good example to run through. So I'm just going to click out of this. And I'm going to grab some Excel. Maybe you got to go into the query editor. And it looks like so you see here that there's no no sort of table names on these but that's all right we're getting we're getting the actual tables in excel now one thing i will also need here um is, is a date table you, you I mean you generally always need that so so why don't we go and grab that now and you know uh if, if you've listened to any of these lately i always get my date table from the forum now 
um, because uh, Melissa, one of the enterprise DNA experts, has created the ultimate the ultimate date table. Um, you know, the best one online by far uh, down here. So um, all you need to do is navigate to the M code showcase and click on that, and you'll find the extended date table. This is what you want to. This is what you want to select, and you'll see here that everyone's just talking so highly highly of how good this is so I'm just going to copy copy all of that it's so quick as well right so it's so quick to go and get this stuff and then I come in here I want to create a blank query and then go to the advanced editor copy that in go done okay uh, I forgot what actual time frame we actually sort of need here so let's have a look sort let's sort of send in okay so it looks like it's it's sort of just this year so we'll go we'll go first of the first 2019 to let's go first of the uh 31st of the 12th 2021 start month for financial year seven i don't need any of this other stuff but this is all other other great stuff like adding adding um, holidays etc you can do that there's the what Melissa is a contributor on enterprise DNA TV as well and you'll find that she's created a number of great videos on how to extend this date table even further if you have some nuances to how you need to run run or how to create your own date tables for your own data okay and so I'll just call this dates and as you know I like to do a little bit of a cleanup here and so I'm going to go, so I can do this so quickly. Right? I should be out in and out of here within about five minutes. Um, parameter, parameter query. And I also know, even though I've got a bit of updating to do here, I also know that these are going to be my data model, right? So I like to always put these in a, in a separate group now inside of um, the query editor. And then we can update some of these. So what have we got here? We've got stores, stores here. So I'm just going to update the name. What have we got here? Uh, deliver, delivery data. And what have we got here? We've got warehouses. So I'm just going to update this. Okay, so let's just double check um, some of these some of these names here. As you know, I don't like these sort of like abbreviations, right? Because what what if we place this into a visualization? We're going to get this weird warehouse short code name. And so what we want to do is we want to make sure that it's just a proper format that will, will uh, look good within a visualization if we ultimately use it. Okay. Um, so that's just cleaning that up. Let's go to stores. I think there was a few here. So so I don't even really worry about store ID because I'm never going to use store ID in a particular visualization. But I definitely might use this particular um might use that particular column in a visualization, right? So I want to make sure that the name is full. Okay, delivery data let's have a look here so I'm not going to use all of these um, okay cool okay so it doesn't look like we have too much to, to update there the data is pretty clean already which is great which is which is hard. <laughs> I know it's, it's, it's hardly ever the case but um, but again I would just highly recommend that you um, you know you you get the hang of how to clean things up here okay because uh, you know and it doesn't take long and you only have to do it once so so definitely do that definitely do that okay so what do we got here um now here's where we need to do a little bit of transformation right okay so here this this really isn't that helpful to us this this date and time okay because because what are we going to join it to what are we going to link it up to within this date table when we don't really we don't really have that option right we don't have um an option to have a look at sort of date and uh there's no date and time column here and so i want one thing that i do notice here we probably need to create a time lookup table because we're going to have what we're going to have here is um a date column and also a time column okay so what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to select. Let's let's just let's just go and do it. Um, you know, you can if you break things here, you can always just click black, uh, click back, right? Remember, in the query editor is only just a query. So I need I need a. I'm going to go to add column here. 
Um, and so what you what you can do here is we can extract certain things from it. So uh, I'm going to extract a date only. Okay. So I've got um, date arrived. Okay. Then I'm going to extract from here time only. So time only. Okay. Um, time arrived. Okay. Then I'm going to extract out of here date. So what have we got? Dates left. So it looks like these are mostly going to be the same same date, aren't they? So, um, but, but we'll we'll just we'll just extract it anyway. And then I'm going to go time only, and I'm going to go time left. Time left. Okay. We might even. It's interesting here. I, I think we'll, we'll we'll push ahead and we'll see see how we go. But we might even need to extract out the hour, minute, and second. Depends on sort of depends on what sort of granularity we want to get to. But let's let's just let's just plow ahead. Okay. So I can also delete these columns because I don't really need them anymore. Um, so I'm going to remove them. Let's just see if we can. Um, create what we need with with this okay even this even this time column kind of concerns me a touch so we'll just have to we will just have to see we'll just have to see okay what would be interesting is to test if any of these actually appear on different dates i would guess probably not like this would always be the same date so we could probably even say okay we could probably go delivery date here and only have one date, but I think we probably need to test that somehow. I wonder how we can do that. I mean, we definitely could do that in here. Um, let's give this a go. Let's give this a go. Let's go. Let's invoke a custom function. Let's have a look. Oh, no, sorry, that's not right. Um, we want to conditional column. Let's try this. Let's try conditional column. So um, dates difference. Obviously, this is just this is just cleaning, like simple cleaning up, right? So date arrived is equal to Um, is equal to date left. Let's try that. Haha, uh -huh. no, there is, there is, there is, there is, there is. So there is some that go on different days. Okay, so we can't do that. We can't do that. That's fine. That's fine. It was a good, a quick, quick way to, to check. And again, I didn't break anything. I just zoomed back out, right? Okay, so I think this is probably all we need for now. Uh, I think we could just start playing around within Power BI and just seeing seeing what we, what we can come up with. Um, my only other just to know, just while I'm just while I'm here. So, I mean, we could. So you know how one was true and the other zero was false. You know we can we can work out this stuff um, within measures. You know so we don't really need to turn this to true or false per se. I mean we 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 could. I mean we could go uh, and, and and change it. But I think I think this is fine. This is fine because in in within our measures. I mean we can we can. Let's just let's just let's just push on. Let's just push on. Uh, I think I think a lot is going to become more clear once we actually get in here and um, and start playing around. Okay, so it's just it's just applying it's just applying the queries here. Okay, first place we've got to go model obviously. Okay, so 
and nothing nothing oh, there's it's, it's nothing difficult here which is great looks like they've made some some new updates to the way that the model looks in in the new um updates power bi which is quite interesting which is a bit of a break from other ones uh what it looked like historically small tweaks small tweaks by the looks of it but as you know i don't really worry too much about what is what is in each different table i'm more interested in setting up my uh, model so that i can visualize it in my mind right and so i'm just going to put these in order and so i've got my lookup tables at the top here um so let's go and i've got store id which i can match to my store id here and i got my warehouse id which i can match to my warehouse id as well so i got that Okay, so with dates though, we've got two different dates, don't we? So um, depending on how we want to analyze this, we might have to, we're going to have to create inactive relationships or one active and one inactive. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have one active at the moment so we can have a play around uh, and then we'll see how we need to ultimately do it. So I've got date arrived um, where we've got date left as well. So I'll drag that into date left. Okay, I think this is enough to work with right at the moment, and let's just um, create a few measures and see see how we go uh, in terms of you know there's there's a bit of trial and error that's going to happen here. There's no no doubt about that, but then that, that's absolutely fine. Um, I'm going to go into data. I'm going to create my measure groups really quickly, and going to create go key measures. And I mean, the first measure, I'll, you know, I'm just going to create a few quick measures here just to get going. And, you know, I always, always say you want to start really, really simple. Um, what's the first measure you'd probably create is uh, I would, I would, I'm going to call it deliveries because we want to just count up how many deliveries have been made, right? And so all I need to do here is go deliveries and just count rows. like so and then I can quickly turn this into a measure group so even with this I mean we can say okay well how many deliveries in total um, we can turn this into a simple card Right, so we've got 7,087 deliveries in total. And then very quickly now because of our model, right? I can just put this out to the side because of our model, I can have a look, well, how many deliveries actually happen from each different warehouse? And so I've got warehouse uh, name. We can, so that, I mean, that's not super helpful in terms of the names, but it doesn't really matter. So deliveries, so we can have a look at where the deliveries are actually come from. So reasonable insights already. Um, you know, it's going to be exactly the same for the location because each location has the same warehouse, so it's going to be exactly the same. But I mean, maybe, maybe this is actually more valuable um, just from an initial scoping point of view. Because we've got to think how we're going to actually ultimately visualize this. Like, what, what do we actually want our, our consumer to be able to see? Do, do we want them to be able to. Um, you know look at things by warehouse and by store and and then but or do we want to you know because because you can create those filters but then we might want to also contrast them within, within visualizations so um, a few things to consider okay and then uh, let's have another look so we can also look at this by stores as well so what was the breakup of stores so we can kind of see quite quickly our high performing versus our low performing stores etc and we can click through so already i mean we've created one measure right i mean we've done nothing nothing difficult there and already we're getting pretty pretty good insight okay now we now obviously want to have a look more at those metrics that um that we uh were asked by the um by the management uh we were asked to work out you know how how things performed at certain from between certain warehouses and certain stores right okay so this is this is how we can compare and contrast so we've obviously got our deliveries and then now within this table we want to have a play around 
with these additional metrics, right? And so we can actually use this initial measure to then very simply derive those other ones, right? Those are those other um, those other calculations quite quite easily. So all we need to do, and we can you know, reuse these techniques quite 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 easily. Um, so what's the first one? So um, damaged. We'll just call it. Um, it was labeled label damaged wasn't it so label damaged and so here I can just go calculate deliveries right and then uh, within the deliveries table I don't even need to use filter really I don't uh, I don't I don't think but within the deliveries table uh, we, what do we got we got label damaged uh, equals to one and then close brackets okay so we can I'll just go I'll just create another measure just really quickly label not damaged equals zero and then we can just start building these up right so I can click that in here and you know th these are good things just to have a look at um, just to sense check what you're actually doing uh, and also just to you know just to get a good vibe of like a good idea of what's actually going on in the data we can we can do a lot a lot, a lot of a lot of fancy things um, you know as we as we go along uh, quite easily once we get our base really really solid okay and so let's have a look at some of these other metrics let's just remind ourselves what we needed to actually work out so time spent at store so we're still going to work that out number of times manu manual entry was still used so manual entry damage labels if returns are being collected okay so um let's go let's let's work out manual entry now so so again i can just use a similar measure to this And then I think it was just manual down from memory. So delivery match method manual. So we got that one. So scanned is the other one. So scanned and manual. So let's let's drag that in. Yep. Okay. So so I'm just building it up. I'm not doing anything fancy here. I mean, anyone can do this, right? Just got to understand what calculate does, basically. Match method. Okay, what else have we got? We've got returns collected. Um, so let's just do that. Let's just quickly just do all these. I know it's a little bit monotonous, but once we get these set up, everything will happen a lot quicker. the measure in the wrong place so you see that I had my dates table selected so what I'm going to do is just click on return selected and change the home table to my key measures just a, a quick trick for young players there okay and then we'll just do the opposite of this
And the reason why you want to build this up as well, because think of all the, you know, this is just one context that we're placing over this result. I mean, we can reuse these formulas in many, many different ways. We can layer them on top of each other in visualizations. You know, there's just lots of great stuff that we can, um, we can ultimately do. Uh, okay, so return not collected. Okay, so I think there's two more we need to do. So label damage. Okay, we'll 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 we'll, we'll figure that out uh, later. Let's just do one more thing. Let's try and work out um, time the the sort of time between deliveries, right? Okay, so let's let's see if we can do it at a measure. Okay, so let's just clear these off. What I want to do is I want to have a look at each different. Um, uh, what have we got? Invoice number. I think this is the sort of the unique value of um, so I just got to make sure that it doesn't we want to see every value okay uh, and then what do we got here we want store number so I'm just building it up so that we can we can, we can sort of make sure that um, actually we don't even we didn't even need that we can go store name and warehouse location, warehouse short code, right? And so this is us building up every single delivery so that we can then test. Okay, so I've got date arrived. I'll just place that in there. And then I've got um, time, where is it? Time arrived and time left, okay? So let's create another measure up here, which says um, time spent. Okay, let's try that. Let's let's see if it actually comes up with the right results. So time spent, and we want to go time. Um, what do we want to do? We want to go time, time value. So here's what we want to do. We want to go average x because we need an iterator, right? We need an iterator to work through this. And so we're going to go um, delivery data, okay? And then we're going to go time left minus time arrived, okay? Because what this, what this, okay? Well, let's just let's just test it because at different granularity, like a different context, this is going to produce a different result, isn't it? So here. Um, Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. So, let's format this as a decimal number. And let's see if we can add. Okay, cool. So, what do we got here? So this is basically, I'm just having a look at these results, trying to reconcile. So what we've got here, no, it's not giving us, because what we want is we, we basically want to say, okay, well here they were there for three minutes, right? Um, and I, this number doesn't seem to be right to me. So let's let's change this, let's change this. Okay, let's just have a, let's have a quick play around. So this is where time can get a little bit tricky, a little bit tricky. Um, okay, and then I'm going to go return time value. Time value. Let's see what this does. No. Okay, hold on a second.
is this the like, like the question I need to ask myself is is this actually producing what what number is this actually producing this decimal number Hmm. Let me have a think about this. Let me have a think. So nine to so two, two one, twenty one. Because that is about three minutes, isn't it? Three minutes. That's about th that's thirteen minutes. So why is it? Why is it? And we need to obviously deal with these as well. Huh. Hmm. Okay, so we're going to have to do something different here, I think. I th uh, just, I'm going to try something quickly. I'm going to go back to the query editor. I just want to try something out here first. Um, and I'm going to... I'm going to bring back these two columns with the date and time. And then I'm going to go close and apply. <clears throat> and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put these two particular columns in here instead and see if that actually picks up the times better. So let's have a look. Time left store and time arrived. Okay, let's try this. Same thing. Hmm. It's fixed up all the ones which were overnights though, so that's good. What am I missing here? This 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 is probably actually the right answer. We just need to turn it into sort of time, don't we? Um let's have a look. So at the moment. Let's have a look. Let's try some. Let's try a few other things. Let's just just keep keep working through some ideas. This is what happens sometimes. You just get a bit stuck, uh, which I am now. So <coughs> minutes, minutes. Hmm. Okay, so that is returning the right answer now, interestingly enough. Okay, so let's just double check that these are right. So what's this? 24 minutes, 20. Okay, let's try and find one that's overnight. So Where's one that goes overnight? Just to double check. Here's one, 34 minutes. Okay, cool. Okay, well, I think, look, I, just through that bit of testing, I think we've figured it out. So what we'll do 
is we will call um, uh, let's call this load minutes um, or what should we call well, let's have a look what should we call it time okay okay I think this will do us I mean does it really like the, the, the just do the seconds really matter I think the minutes here is is fine from a analysis perspective right and so what we have now is we can see the by using that average well, we know that this is average X right this is average x and so we know that we're going to get the average no matter where we actually place this and so what we can do is we can drill down so say we want to have a look at specific uh, warehouses we can now look at the deliver the average delivery minutes for each different warehouse right so it looks like they all all are pretty pretty similar um, so we want to break it down more we could then look at it by store I wonder if this is quite similar to probably because the data is quite random um, let's have a look cool okay well at least we got some good we got some values now that may that make sense and we can sort of see it at a more granular level like what's happening with each different um, delivery uh, and then we can we can aggregate it up because we use the uh, average x function the iterating function okay Okay, so we've done a lot of the initial calcs here, which is great, which is really, really good. Okay, uh, and then so, you know, we can measure lots of things now um, quite quite efficiently. Uh, and we can aggregate them up quite, quite easily. So let's just, what I thought we should do, let's double check. Or just bring in um, the actual, like, what are we trying to show here? Because we're, we're almost, I would say, we are almost at the visualization layer right which is great because we've, we've we've really drilled down into all the specific things that we were asked and so if i just bring this back up so management is particularly interested in any warehouse store combination that is not working well okay and the time being spent at a store the number of times number of damaged labels etc 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 so the key uh, the key thing that we need to evaluate here, this is what it's saying, is is this. What is there? Uh, let's get rid of that and get rid of that. So we're looking here at store store name warehouse combinations, right? We're trying to evaluate here if there's any issues. Um, that's not what we want. We want this here. We want to see the combinations and see what see what see what the issues are there. But this still doesn't. I mean, in terms of this, this gives us a you know a good average. So it says here that that NY Arlington um, has the most the longest delivery. Uh, minutes but what we could also probably do is have a look at okay, what are the actual amount of deliveries so 11 deliveries so for some reason this combination this combination of uh, warehouse and store is really really long deliveries so um, what why is that we, we need to we need to just to, to, to drill in there a little bit more um, let's turn this into a table so we can have a look <clears throat> and one, one thing we, we we haven't really done here is we could do sort of percentages as well which I think is a, is a, is a good metric like percentage of um, damage that, that are damaged percentage that are not damaged I mean I, I, I even think we should probably do that so let's let's do it I mean this is not not difficult at all um, so let's just create a new measure and we'll go um, percent damaged We'll go divide the what do we got here we've got um, damaged label damaged versus deliveries right 
I mean, I even think this is probably a better metric for it rather than the absolutes. Um, but again, these, this is this is very very easy, right? Once we actually set up these core ones, and so I'm going to go um, percent manual. And then I'm just going to go divide by manual, and then deliveries. Okay, and then um, returns. So percentage returns. So another one. Percentage returns. Okay, then we just have to make sure that we have the right formatting here. So I'll just turn these into percentages. Just make it one decimal point, don't need two. Okay, cool. And so I think this gives us uh, a good, you know, we can we can actually see the breakdown of performance a little bit easier. So what do we got there? So we've got sort of the average time spent. To so total deliveries should probably go before that, I think. Total deliveries, delivery minutes. Okay, so we're starting to really get some good traction here, right? Um, and now it's just a matter of like how how do we want to visualize it? So want to create help management visualize what is happening so we can decide what the next stage of the transformation is the management are particularly interested in any warehouse store combination that is not working well for okay cool okay so why don't we why don't we just have a bit of a play around so a couple of things that i think we should probably show here so I, I'll, I'll get a bit of inspiration for what i think um can ultimately be our design shortly but i just want to just just tie up a few other things so what i'm going to do i'm going to create a deliveries visualization because i think i think that we do kind of want to show what's actually happening um, on a daily basis, and then sort of be able to create some 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 filters that look that look uh, that look good uh, within. Well, enable the consumer to sort of so we can kind of see here. Okay, well we're seeing a bit of um, seeing a lot of deliveries every day, uh, and then we might want to we might want to have a look. Okay, let's just have a look at Florida or something like that, or let's just have a look when these sort of deliveries occur. And then we can kind of kind of see the correlation um, between different different regions, that, you know, by doing that. So um, let's just have a let's have a have a quick play around here. This is what I usually do. I usually mock it up. Sometimes I actually draw it out as well, and and that's a that's a decent recommendation for you also. So I can um, I might create sort of a donut chart out of this. And obviously the colors aren't great here. We're going to use the the color theme generator um, shortly, which is in the analyst hub. Um, so let's just see. Let's just see what this looks like. And and what I'm thinking is it would be good to sort of maybe create a metric where what's what's what do we see as because um, at the moment we're just looking at the total deliveries, but maybe we want to actually also see, okay, well, what were the average delivery times each day um, when when something occurred, right? So we could also put delivery minutes in here, right, and see like was there any particular trends? I mean, we, we're going to make this look a lot better shortly, but um, I'm just having a play around. Was there any trends in terms of uh, when things were faster and slower, depending on which region we're in, for example? Okay, and then we've obviously also got we've got our stores that we can analyze as well. 
So maybe we want to have a look at here, delivery minutes as well. Cool. Okay. Well, look, I think I think we can we can we can create something quite nice with this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to come to our knowledge base, the knowledge base on enterprise DNA, um, uh, it, on the enterprise DNA site. And what we have here, what we have here, and this is at info info.enterprisedna.co. What we have here is we've got we're really building this up. There's lots of great stuff embedded into here. So I recommend checking out our guides. Um, we've got a demo data library, Power BI challenges, report design inspiration. So this is what I'm going to go into here, and this is where you can you can also go to our showcase page as well. So that's another. So if you want to go and have a look at showcases, you can very easily do that on our website as well. But this is where we. Oh, sorry, I, I actually clicked into it. This is where we are collating a lot of the great reports that we're seeing in other challenges but also that we're just seeing um, online. So a lot of this is sort of just ideas that uh, that I've I've seen you know online and I've just copied and pasted them and, and uh, filed them away to sort of have a good review of at a later point in time. Um, and so there's lots of lots of things that you can have a quick look at here and decide well is that is it something that would look good in in my report as well? So I'm just having a look through here, trying to think. I've always wanted to create a a report that kind of looks like this, because I think this is this is quite this is quite an interesting um, an interesting look, right? It's kind of like it's got this sort of grids, which is which is which is pretty cool, um, but just sort of like key information, and and maybe maybe this is all we need. Maybe this is honestly all we need, right? You know, this is this is this is for something a, a, a little bit different, like a, um, maybe like a, like a fitness tracker or something like that. But in terms of like building a dashboard, I th I thought that this would be something quite cool. So why don't we why don't we just give it a go? Why don't we why don't we try and build up our metrics here, sim in a similar look like this? Okay, and I think I think it could be quite good. So what we have first got to do is we've got to create a good color palette, right? And so these color palettes are uh, pretty pretty darn average, as I'm sure most of you are aware. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into into the analyst hub, um, not the analyst cloud, the analyst hub, and we're going to go to the color theme generator. So we we are working on some seriously exciting uh, updates to the analyst hub uh, as a, as a application, and we're going to we're trying to build this application that anyone who is using Power BI um, or as, as an analyst within an organization will want to use this tool. Um, so it's got some, it's going to be, we're going to release it in the next couple of months. Um, and I think you're going to really, really love it. Uh, so excited to get that into your hands. So what I'm going to do here, I use, I've been using this color fan a lot. Um, there's a few, there's a few updates that I think that we need to make to some of the other ones, like uh, this image from colors. We, we actually need more colors here. So I'm working with my team on that. Because um, you know, you know, in your Power BI reports, you need to uh, when you when you go and customize it, you need at least I think it's eight. Is it eight? You need at least eight colors to to create a workable palette. And so what I want to do is I want to try and create ten colors here, so we can have options. Um, I'm also finding and and this this is some feedback that you can give us as well, right? Like we I'm 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 sort of. We're, we're investing in these tools because we want to use them and we want you to use them as well. And so what I'm finding with this um, generator as well is the colors are too variable. Um, you know, I like similar sort of color palettes and I also want to be able to say lock in a few colors and be able to find all the other colors which align with that. And so that's some development work we're probably going to do on this one as well. But I've been finding this color fan is really, really effective. And so what I need, all I do is I sort of click around to find the colors that I want. I actually quite like these colors um, and I just move the fan round and I am able to pick which colors I want based on that and again we're going to try and make this um, bigger with with more colors as well so that you can quickly copy it into your into your model but what I have to do here is I'm just going to I'm going to move this to the side 
and it's actually you know the way we've built it is really really quick to go and change your palette and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come in here and go customize palette and then i just need to come in and paste these in just one at a time like so um, what i might do is i might start a bit darker so i just need to make a few updates like this it takes you know one minute Okay, and then apply. Okay, and then so we've got a sort of slightly. I'm just going to have have a quick look at the palette here. Oh, no, I don't want that. Okay, and this is our this is our palette here, and it's kind of in reverse order to how the colors sort of work in other palettes, but that's alright. Um, okay, so cool. Okay, I think this is this is this is going to be. I mean, it's, it's, an, it's an interesting palette, but definitely, definitely workable. Um, and so what we're going to do is I'm going to get up my design inspiration here. So I can have this up. I'm going to bring it to the side so I can actually have a look at it while, while I'm working. So I can kind of get a good feel. I think this is going to look great. I think we can do something really, really interesting here. So what we want to do is so let, I think I think like well if we need any other calculations we'll 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 certainly work that out. But what I think we want to do is we want to um, you know just have sort of like high level information on which ones are underperforming um, per like per per location or per per warehouse. You know we just want high level metrics. We don't need anything. You know we don't need. In, we're trying to just really extract the key things and we will um, maybe maybe an additional page will have the underlying data if we really want to get sort of um, more more in depth in the specifics but in this case I think we're just looking at high level stuff so um, so what do we what can we start with let me just get rid of that Okay, so we'll change the background color. We'll figure out what sort of background we want first. So I think we'll go. Yep. Okay. And we're gonna we're gonna be using a few shapes here. I would say. So we're gonna get rid of backgrounds on these. All right. And we'll create the backgrounds with our. So we won't. We won't have. We won't have this. We'll create the backgrounds with our. Um, you know, with our with our shapes, so that we can get it similar to that um, that example. And we might actually build up our shapes as well. So this is, this is quite a unique un, unique look. But this is the great thing about Power BI, right? Microsoft have built in the ability to create anything you like. It's just totally up to your creativity. Which is which is something that I've always been a big fan of is is you know not being too constrained with the tool, being able to you know create what you want, the look that you want. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna take up about this amount of room, I think. Cool. Okay, so I'm gonna move this to the back. Um, send backwards to back. Okay, and we'll create sort of like a, um, we'll get rid of the fill, create a background here, and we'll sort of create a, a color that we can sort of has as the background.
It's got to contrast well, I guess, with what we've got here, doesn't it? Another, another thing you could possibly do here, which could be a good option as well, is you could um, actually create a background, say, in PowerPoint, where this is sort of embedded into it. I mean, maybe maybe what we'll do, maybe what we'll do is we will um, we will we'll do we'll just do a little little squares around, and we'll try and we'll try and replicate this. So we'll see we'll see what squares sort of squares next to each other look like. Change this background color a little bit. Okay. I think we've got more, more layers here, so I'll just work these in. So we can start putting some things in. We can. So we want. We want. We probably want the user to be able to select a few things here. And so deliveries, for example, uh, that might be a good thing to sort of put in the next layer down, right? Okay, so I'm just going to get these set up properly first, and then I can sort of reuse these over and over again if I need to. So I'm going to create, what have we got here? Text box. Let's go to call it total deliveries. So, sorry if I'm not sort of describing exactly what I'm doing here, but a lot of this is just having a play around. <laughs> usually, usually I don't have to talk the whole time when I'm when I'm uh, when I'm working away at these sort of things. Uh, but uh, let's have a play around. I mean, what I think I could also do in here, I think icons are going to be quite crucial. So, uh, let's let's bring an image in. Let's go and find my icons. I have them somewhere. Um, icon vectors. Okay, let's have a look. I've got some delivery ones somewhere. Um, let's let's go with this baby.
Okay, I think that's starting to look good. Um, and then we want to we want to have a look at by day here. Do we want to create some sort of probably want to create some sort of slider, don't we? Some sort of way to focus in on specific specific dates. So let's have a look. Let's see what we can come up with here. We'll try and create something quite innovative around the look and feel of it. And how I feel like this box should be sort of how you can manipulate things. So we want to go between. And so let's just have a look. Let's get rid of the slicer header. I don't love, I don't love the look of it like that so much. Okay, we'll, we'll we'll figure something out with that in a little bit. We're also gonna we're also gonna lower shorten the time frame quite significantly around what can be selected. Right. Okay. So I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a quick play around with how we can make this look as well. And it's it's looking I I, I kind of like the way that it's sort of shaping up already in terms of the way a way it's going to stand out and this is this is quite different right this is quite a different way to make your report look so I'm I'm liking it I'm liking it I think we're going to need a different color up here actually which will be fine which will be fine that we no problem i think we probably want a different shade i'll just set it up And so because it's such a dark background, what we need to do is obviously make these colors lighter so that they appear. It seems okay for now. Let's turn these off completely. And what we'll do is we'll make it really obvious what's being shown based on some selections that we make. So we're getting we're getting quite uh, it's quite interesting what we're trying to do here on the visualization. I love the visualization aspect of it. If you didn't realize it already, like I'm really big on making things look really compelling, right? Because that's what's going to draw the the user in ultimately. Like we're going to really make this pop, um, and it's going to draw people to use the app a lot more. Um, let's have a look, let's have a look. So we're going to do a different color here. I 
I mean, we don't want to go too pink, I don't think, here. We want sort of more maroony type colours, don't we? So we can go like that. And that's not enough. Okay. Right. I wonder what this would look like if it was a line chart. Hmm, interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Could this be, could this be, because they, we really wanted to see that, right? Um, mm hmm, mm hmm. really trying to figure out how I'm going to tell my story here. That's why I'm just having a play around with these colors. Okay, I'm going to push this to the back. So I've got on the side of my um, view here this one here so I'm I'm taking a few cues off this I'm not building it exactly the same but I'm I'm trying to think okay how can we how can we create something sort of with a similar look I'm getting inspiration that's what it's that's what it's all about right um, and I'm just sort of playing around trying to see um, you know what would look good here and what I'm going to do is this one I'm going to I'm going to make this color white Get rid of the title. Keep the y-axis. One thing I really don't like, which I've mentioned a few times, is I don't love that title on the how it's how it's standard now. Never used to be standard, but for some reason it is now. Probably we want a Y axis here as well. I'm going to make it really obvious what a user has selected as their time frame so that it's really easy to understand what these metrics are here, like what this is actually showing. Okay. Um, what I'm going to change. We need this to be as almost as white as we possibly can get it. Let's just go fully white on this as well. Okay, okay, okay. So I think is this is this the same color as it? Not sure. We want this to be the same color as that one. This is actually a really cool visualization technique in terms of like making things really, really stand out like key figures. Like you'll see here, I'm not going to create, I'm going to have a lot of like granular detail, but I am going to have um, things that I, I, I really am going to make 
stand out, like make them, um, make the user be under no illusions as, 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 as to what are the key, key performance metrics or the key performance indicators and using these sort of squares, uh, enables you to do this really well. Like this would be a, like how I'm imagining this is, is something that, you know, you put up in a big screen, you put up in a big screen in your office and you're trying to, um, you know, evaluate, uh, you, 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 you're trying to be able to see, you see, you'll be able to see from a distance what, what are the key things. It's not like you have to like sort of dig into the detail by clicking on, on, on a few things here and there. Okay, so, which is a little bit different for me. Like this isn't, this isn't something that I've always, I've always done with these sort of things. So, okay, cool. Okay, so now we've got to fill in, now we've got to fill in the blanks. Like we've got a good, um, you know, good look here. I mean, it's, 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 there's probably, there's definitely some improvements we can make, but we'll, 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 we will do that. Okay, so what have we got here? What are some other key things that we want to have a look at? So we've got deliveries. Um, we've also got here, right? We want to have a look at percent damaged. Maybe we actually want to turn these into, th we want three in here. Want three different metrics. one's going to be percent manual and this one's going to be percent returned these are very high numbers um, to be honest which is a, a bit weird for some demo data but um, but that's what it is we have to take it for what it is Damaged. So now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna try and get all these details down and I'll refine it a bit later. So percentage manual. one is percent returned okay 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 so we've got to be able to enable the user to be able to click quite easily on say the warehouse and the store right that's that's one of the sort of key things that we're trying to uh, enable here and so that they can see okay well this is how they performed versus say the average maybe maybe that's maybe that's what we've got to um uh, compare it to <clears throat> so that's something to to sort of bear in mind um so up this top layer we want to be able to make some selections and then be able to see okay well this is the amount of deliveries maybe maybe we need to have a visualization here that sort of says okay if you select a warehouse, warehouse here here are all the stores that that warehouse um sort of uh connects into so maybe we need to think of a visualization like that mm. and then hmm. yeah yeah that's interesting well, and then maybe down here we want to compare maybe we want like the top five something like that top top five um warehouses or top five okay let's have a look right 
Right, I've got a few other ideas here. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to actually stand up at my desk, if you don't mind. I've got a, I've got a electronic stand-up desk. I'll just move, adjust a few things here. Just give me a second. Just get my microphone in the right place. Okay. So things we need to solve for, I think what we want to do, right, is we want to be able to, so this is the this is the, the sort of like workflow of the solution. We want to be able to select a certain warehouse and then we want to see based on that warehouse who, which stores we we go to with that particular warehouse, right? So let's, let's just start mocking this up. So I'm going to bring in my, uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to call this, Oh, I'll adjust this warehouse location. Okay. Okay, let's try to get this in here somewhere. Because what we want to do is we want to turn this into a slicer. And we want to move it up here. And then I'm going to do dro a drop down. Okay. And so we want to be able to select one, right? And then we want to see how that compares, okay? <clears throat> okay. So the first thing we probably want to do as well here is when we select a store, we want to see exactly which stores, sorry, when we select a warehouse, we want to select, see which stores are in that particular, that particular warehouse sells to. So not not sells to, but at least delivers to. Right, and so I'll just have a play around with what we can do do with this. Um, column headers. So I'll just kind of get these into place and then I'll, I'll refine the sort of look to make it sort of stand out a bit more surely. So we only want single select. So it does just quite a few stores, doesn't it? I think because the data is quite random, it's not actually uh, the stores sort of appear in every, they sort of appear in every selection here. But that's all right. I wonder where my, um, my date selection went. Hmm. Did we put it in behind here, did we? Think, oh, I know how we can we can actually have a look at it through here. We can uh, selections. So where is the slicer? So it's that slicer. Oh, 
here we go here. Let's make sure we move this to the front. What I also thought is that we could we could create some some interesting um, visualization visualizations here with our um, with a donut chart. So, for example, what we could do is this: we could. Um, so, what do we got here? Total damage. So, what we could do is we could say add label damaged and label not damaged to this, right? So it's it's exactly 50% at the moment. Uh, then what we could do is we could try and align the non-damaged. So we could get rid of, I think this would look quite good. Um, we could just get rid of everything here. Right. And then within the data colors, label not damaged, we could try and get that is the same color as the background. Right? I mean maybe we could put it on on the front here. And so as we change this around, so as we change the selection to say something else or so we would see how it adjusts based on say anything we select here. I think we want this to be a um, a bar chart as well. Yeah, I think that's going to look better. Okay, so I think that looks that's looking all right. It's looking pretty good. Um, well, in terms of like functionality, my only other thought with this is: do we want to compare this to, say? like the average that would be my only thought i mean what we could potentially yeah i mean that's that's something something to consider something to consider what i thought down here we could do is we could so we could have like say um we could have say stores like this right we could have stores um So we'll get rid of that and we'll put store name there. <laughs> and so you know, what I thought we could do here is we could say, okay, well, here are the sort of top three stores or something like that. Um, you know, based on based on a selection here, here are the the top three stores. Or, or maybe we could have a switch. We could say, we could say, okay, show me the show me the top stores versus the the bottom stores, right? Um, so let's let's have a play around with what we can do we can do with this. So let's try and. Um, clean this up a little bit. So there's a little bit, just a little touch-ups here and there, right?
and so this is this is total deliveries I mean maybe maybe we want to just keep it simple here right I mean maybe what if what if what if we do this like we could always we could always just create a bookmark where you can change from ascending to descending just by clicking a like icon or something like that so that could be another option so let's let's give that a go Also, what do you think of some of the speed build videos that uh, we've been putting online? So, you know, what, what we'll do with this one as well is that we'll we'll try and get this down to sort of a five minute video so you can sort of watch it on, on speed build. This is sort of a new initiative that we've been working on. Let me know what you think in the in the comments of this video. I think I think it's really cool. I think it's like I actually like watching them back. Um, you know, it's kind of kind of kind of chills me out a little bit. Um, just sort of watching watching how something can be built from start to finish and you know you know how I got into it was I uh, my son is getting quite into Legos and there's all these great uh, videos um, online about Lego speed builds and I thought well why can't we do that for Power BI that's so cool and so that's sort of where we got the idea from and I think that um, I think that it's quite cool I think that there's some good um, some good, some good, some good. Uh, it's a good way to represent, you know, or, or I guess showcase, um, you know, some complete developments, which was what, you know, a lot of those, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of subscribers and a lot of those in the enterprise DNA community want to see. Okay, so this is visual. I mean, I could have, I could have done a really simple visualization, right? But I. I, I just use I like to take a little bit more care in how I do these and you know make it really stand out right consumers are gonna really come back to things that look good like that is the reality they're gonna they want to see things that that stand out and um, you know by creating visualizations like this this is, this is what's gonna happen okay so what do we got I'm gonna change this to I'm gonna I guess I'm gonna I can sort of replicate what's what's sort of above there I mean maybe maybe we sort of put this one high we'll see we'll see yeah huh? we'll see um may, maybe this one should go sort of down the bottom so what have we got um, I want to place this in here And I want to place this in here. Last one. Do we update this one? Not yet. So when I select here. Probably what we want to do is within these ones we want to actually have within the tooltips how many deliveries occurred right so deliveries oh no what am I doing so you can kind of understand well if I go over this so there's three deliveries in in that
And I mean, the other thing we could do is we could, um, you know, we could actually put delivery minutes, the average delivery minutes as well, couldn't we? I mean, that's another option. What I'm going to do, I think I'm going to wrap up this um, demonstration pretty soon and I'm going to put the finishing touches on myself um, because we're almost there and what I would recommend, what I would recommend, like, um, you know, highly recommend is checking out the the Enterprise DNA, um, well, the, the, the challenge thread, the Power BI challenge thread within the Enterprise DNA forum because that's where I'm going to put my finished, uh, my finished submission. I'll, I'll also write about it and create a video about it a short, like a like a uh, maybe a shorter video in the in the challenge wrap up so there'll be there'll be some other material um that i put out on it on it as well um but i can already like i can already sort of think of some of the things that i would i, I would adjust here um you know just making sure that we're really highlighting the correct thing correct things i might even move this layer up one so it's sort of below below the actual numbers like that that's certainly an option as well my other thought is maybe having like a bookmark strategy where you can click on something and then this this changes the um from ascending to descending because maybe you actually want to see the 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 smaller ones who knows um so i thought that that would look quite cool as well so something i i might i might have a look at okay so let's uh let's wrap things up for now um, but you've seen, you know, you've seen us get up to here within, you know, I think, what is it, sort of two hours or so. Uh, and I've probably got another half an hour to go just to refine it, just to make, sh make sure that I've got everything that I want in here, you know, making sure it's looking good. Uh, and then, you know, um, and then we're there. We're, 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 we've created something that we can, you know, we can, we can sort of link to our, you know, our, our, our app, right? Because maybe this is an app that you roll out to lots of people. And you could just you know flick a flick a filter in the background here and and reuse this multiple times like that's the that's the great thing about um, you know uh, one of the one of the great um, scale things that you get with power with working with Power BI in this sort of way. Okay, well thanks everyone. Thanks for thanks for joining me on this one. Hopefully you really really enjoyed me sort of going through um, in a bit more detail how how I actually work through these um, development tasks. And these challenges and i look forward to doing a lot more of these i, I really enjoy doing it i enjoy getting creative um, I, I enjoy showcasing you know the the variety that you have um, at your fingertips with power bi so hopefully hopefully you enjoyed as well okay all the very best talk to you talk to you very soon don't also just it, lastly don't forget to subscribe to enterprise dna tv um, lots of lots of great content like this coming out in the near future so want want you to you know see see how i do things in many different ways uh, going forward okay take care all the best